Good afternoon, welcome church, uh, welcome to our 4pm online service. Uh, my name's Ben and this is Jess, uh, my wife, and um, we're really excited to be leading the service this weekend. Uh, we're going to be continuing our series on uh, the big questions of life uh, and Jess is going to be uh, trying to answer the question, is believing in God just a delusion? Uh, which is a big question and mm-hmm. um, so um, before we jump into that we thought it'd be a great idea um, to uh, for you to get to know us a little bit so we're going to do some quick fire questions a quick interview and um, just so that you uh, that you know us because we've not been around for for that long in mm-hmm. Shadwell or at St Paul's so Jess I'll let you go first okay first question uh, what's one thing you're looking forward to after coronavirus is over um, Going to nice restaurants again and eating some good food because my cooking is not very good. Mm. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. What is one thing you like to do in your spare time? Uh, anything to do with football, really, uh, or sport in general, watching it, playing it. Mm. Love, love sport. And then on sport, what, who do you support? Which football team? Uh, I am a Man United fan. Sorry, Leeds fans. Mm. Bad news. Right, your turn. Mm-hmm. So, um, why have you got a funny accent? Because I was brought up in Liverpool, moved to Nottingham for uni, and then came to Leeds. Nice. Um, what's your favourite type of food? Italian. Okay. And if you could be anywhere in the world right now, where would you be? Tuscany, eating Italian food. That makes sense. That makes sense. Me too, actually. <laughs> so um, we're going to uh, to pray now. I'm just going to uh, let Jess pray uh, and then I will do our reading. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you that we can meet together virtually and uh, be with you, listen to your word and worship. We just pray that you would bless this time, that we would learn something new about you, Lord. We love you and we love you and we thank you for this time. Amen. Amen. Great. The reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through to 13. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love God does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. week we started a new series on life's big questions and this week's question is isn't God just as illusion we live in a world full of mysteries and in some ways Christianity is no different often what we believe about God says more about us than it does about God John Mark Comer a pastor from a large church in America said our theology is like a mirror to the soul It shows us what's going on deep inside of us. Often we've made our minds up on a subject and we're resistant to ever consider what the alternative may be. So I want to invite you for the next five minutes, when whether you're a sceptic or a believer, to um, seek and consider um, whether God is a delusion. There are many theories and reasons around why God is a delusion. You could look to Richard Dawkins or Sam Harris who have written books and um, spoken on this subject before. But often we see those that start the journey of trying to prove that God doesn't exist sometimes come to the conclusion that actually he might exist. Um, Albert Einstein, for example, said, The more I study science, the more I believe in God. Isaac Newton said, gravity explains the motions of the planets, but it cannot explain who sets the planets in motion. C.S. Lewis spent spent most of his life arguing that God didn't exist, to then go and write one of the most popular Christian books, Mere Christianity, about his journey back to faith. Dan Brown, the author of The Da Vinci Code, 
and um, fell away from his faith when he was studying science. He said, science tells me that God must exist. My mind tells me I will never understand God and my heart tells me I'm not meant to. Each of these individuals, they did their research, they explored their doubts and they came to their own conclusions. Today, I'm going to share three of the reasons why I think God is not a delusion and that um, I believe that God um, is living and that we can have a relationship with him today. The first one is creation. I'm not sure about you, um, but I've had moments in my life where I've been in front of a beautiful view or in front of the sea or watching a sunset and I've just been blown away by the beauty in front of me. And I've had many, many moments like this. And for me, I just think, wow, like how could there not be a God? How could there not be a creator behind this? How could this be by accident? For me, I believe that creation and the universe point to a creator. It says in um, Romans 1 verse 20, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. I think the fact that we are all unique, that we are living, that we were made in God's likeness, and that we were not here by chance, that we were created before and thought of even before we were in our mother's womb. For me, he is the author of all life. We are not a product of random chance, but we are his masterpiece. The second reason is um, Jesus. Um, John was one of Jesus' disciples and he was there right from the beginning of Jesus' ministry. In John's letters in the Bible, unlike the passage that we just heard Ben read, the historical and theological records of Jesus' time on earth. And John writes these letters to us to say that he saw Jesus, that he heard Jesus, that he observed Jesus and that he touched Jesus. He's trying to tell us what we've heard about him is true and that Jesus is the real deal. And although we can't see Jesus face to face today, we have his word. We have books like um, written by John in the Bible. We have people's testimonies of how God's moved in their life. And that we have the spirit of God that is with us now and moves among us today. For me, the evidence is all around us. Jesus came to this earth. In his time here, he demonstrated what real love looks like. God sent his only son to the earth and watched him die on the cross so we could have a relationship with him. And God sacrificed his one and only son. He demonstrated through Jesus what real love looks like. And that is for me is the third reason why I believe God isn't a delusion. Is God's love is deep love for us. Now, I'm not talking about an earthly love, like the love that, the word that we use quite a lot, like I love pasta, I love football, um, I love TV. It's a different kind of love. It's a love that is deep, regardless of what we have done. God loves us exactly as we are today. We don't have to work for his affection and his love is not circumstantial. It's available to us every single day. In the passage we read before, in verse 12, it says, No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. We're made to love. We're created to soak up the love of God and then to share it with everyone around us. And I know for some of us, this might be hard to grasp and it can be quite difficult to understand. And doubt is okay. Doubt can be good. In uh, Matthew 28, it talks about the um, apostles going to meet Jesus after he'd risen from the dead. 
And when the apostles saw Jesus, it said some of them still doubted. Even those that followed Jesus all the way through his ministry and saw the work he did, they were looking at him straight in the eye. They could touch him with their hands and they still doubted. Therefore, it's not just us. It's not just the scientists. It's not just the theologians. But the apostles responded how many of us would today. Seeing does not always mean believing. And that's why it can be so difficult. But I believe when we seek God, when we seek a relationship with him, we experience his love. That we can learn about Jesus and that we can appreciate God in all of the, his creation that we live in today. In Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. We have the opportunity to seek. We have the opportunity to explore our faith. And we can choose to take that step whenever we're ready. And um, today, Ben is now going to lead us um, in doing that as a response. Whether you have a relationship with God or not, God's, um, Ben's going to lead us in that now. Great. Thank you, Jess. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to respond um, to that message now. Uh, and the way in which we're going to do that is um, we're just going to invite um, we're going to invite the Holy Spirit uh, into our homes, into our into our hearts, uh, and we're going to experience that that love of God. Um, we believe that God wants to meet with each and every one of us, whether we have a relationship with Him or not. Uh, he made us. He loves us so much, um, and we believe that He wants to uh, to come and meet with those that are open to um, and are, are looking to to meet with Him. So. Uh, I'm just going to pray um, and if you want to um, hold your hands out um, just as a posture to receive uh, his spirit to say yes I'm here I'm open to you um, and I want to experience your love um, then do do that um, and if not then um, then that's absolutely fine too. So God we come to you. We thank you. We thank you for our lives and we thank you for the love that you have for us. We thank you that it's unconditional, that nothing can separate us from your love. And we just pray now and ask that you would come by your Holy Spirit and that we would experience your love. We wait on you now. And we ask that you would come into our lives. God, we ask for more of you in us. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit. We receive your love. We receive your peace. great um well um just remember you can do that anywhere um god isn't just for sundays he's uh he's for the whole week um so um yeah he always loves it when when we come and ask to meet with him um so i encourage you to do that this week too um, i'm gonna lead us in a time of worship now uh, the words for the song uh, will be down below and um and yeah, I just encourage you to uh, to again spend this time to reflect, to engage with God and, and what he wants to do in your life today. Thank you. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and thank you to all the jury members um, who do enjoy supporting me. Um, just a few reminders. So um, on Wednesday, Joe is going to be uh, leading the uh, Facebook live prayer at 8 a.m. Um, so do, uh, do join her uh, in that. And if you want to check out any of our other services, you can go to any of our social media platforms or head over to our new website and on our homepage. Our services are updated every Sunday for you to access. Great. So let me close in prayer and then, uh, and then we'll finish. Father God, we thank you that you are good, uh, that you're faithful and that we can, um, we can have a relationship with you, that we can know that you are real uh, because um, of your creation, because of uh, the fact that you sent your one and only son Jesus to the earth uh, and the fact that we experience that relationship and that love that you've given us. Um, we pray that you would bless our weeks, uh, that you would go with us, that you would surround us and that we would feel your presence close with us. Amen. 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 Bye. Bye.